We've got a roundup of the hottest new gaming gear from E3 in this hour. Call for help. Hi, call for help. How are you? Hello and good to see you. Welcome to Call for Help. I am your genial host, Leo Laporte. So good to see you. Welcome to the show. This is going to be a fun one. In case you've never seen this show before, and I know there are a few, all we do here is we help you get the most out of technology. We want to take technology and make it yours, empower you. I hate the word empower, but that's what we do. Take these little spawns of Satan, these little beige box from hell, and make it something that you can use to change your life and to make the world a better place. That's all. That's all I ask. And we have a lot of fun doing it. If you have a question, use the email form on our website, techtv.com slash call for help. See, there it is right, right there. And yeah, we could get you on the show. That's what we do, too. We take calls on the show. Love doing that, too. Hearing from you, the people. On today's show, Andrew Hahn, our good man from the lab, and the rest of the lab rats, they were at E3, the big gaming convention. I'm so jealous. They worked the floor for days looking for the coolest new gaming gadgets, gear, and peripherals. He's exhausted. He looks tired. You have fun? Uh, what did he find? No, you look great. I love and, it. It's, and, it's awesome. Oh, it's the, I love that show. I think it's becoming the most fun trade show of all. You know, I've gone for eight years now. Have you really? Yeah, yeah. You, the way back when, when it was the Electronic Entertainment Expo. That's right. You know, the funny thing is, after all these years, I've like gone up in uh, position, and I play less I played like one game this time. Because people want to talk to you. The first time, I played games like yeah. all day. You have I to take it. meetings now, Mr. Hahn. I have to take these stupid meetings. I don't want to <laughs> Well, Andrew has some stuff. He's been taking meetings, and he'll show you the results. And ladies and gentlemen, the one and the only, Kat Schwartz, is going to show you how to design your own custom T-shirts and yeah, hoodies. Yeah, I'm bummed, though, because mine didn't come in time for the show. Oh, they man. sew each thing on individually, so it's this whole process. Is it like an applique? Uh, no, no, no. They're letters that oh, I they get it. individually sew well, on. Well, you can show it's us. It's cool. Yeah, it's going to be cool. And there's right. another custom site that I found that's crazy. You well, can you customize know, if your pants. Like, it's not too late. Bikini. If they come tomorrow, you can show us tomorrow. And if they don't come tomorrow, forget it. Right. <laughs> right. Forget it. Right. So how are you? I love your shirt. Did you design Thanks. that? Yeah. It's no, beautiful. Miss 60 designed this one. Oh. Well, whoever that is. Yeah. She's cool. Even kudos. though I don't even know if it's a, an actual person. It's a good designer. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. How are so you doing? I'm doing very well. How are you today? Pretty good. Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. more day left of this week. And of this show. Yeah. That's our penultimate show. Yeah. But and I should say, you're, you are going on to bigger and better things. Yeah, we'll see. I'm very excited for, yeah. for this young lady. She's yeah. going to be a star. Let's get our first caller on the air okay. here. Who do you have on for us? On the phone, it's Dennis from Houston, Texas. What's up, Dennis? Hello, hey. Dennis. Hello, Leo. How are you, sir? And everybody around. Good evening, morning to your evening, whatever it may be. <laughs> Wherever you may be. That may be listening to Leo. Yay! How are things in Houston? You had some big thunderstorms last week, didn't you? Oh, it rained and rained and rained. Tornadoes? But, but that's good, because I stayed in here and watched y'all. <laughs> I like that. Right? My wife and I were in Florida, and we had to fly th home through Houston. And uh, uh, actually, we flew in separate planes, because she's afraid we'll both go down and orphan oh. our children or something. Anyway, I, my flight, no problem. I got, I got home easy. She was stuck in Baton Rouge. They diverted her to Baton Rouge, and she had to sit there for like eight hours watching the weather report in Houston, watching those storms move through. Man. Well, anyway, I'm glad you survived. Yeah, it looks good here now. What can I do for you? I'd, what I'd like to do is I'd like, I run an Internet Explorer, mm -hmm. and I'd like to open up a new web page every time I open a page. A new web page every time you open up a page. So you're you're on a website, yes. and when you click. A, when you mean when you click a link, you want a new page to open up. Yes, sir. I well, you know, wanna, you I don't want to see a, a go back or anything. I don't want to see where you have to go back to yeah, look yeah. at the previous page. Everything should just open up individually, so it you'll have should. three of them up, up at one time. I understand what you're saying. Unfortunately, our internet's down, so I can't show. You. Now, wh one thing is, of course, you know that shift clicking or right clicking and opening a new window. We'll yeah. do that. But you want it to do it every single time. Yes. I bet you there's a reg hack that'll do that. I don't know off the top of my head. I'm going to have to do some investigation. But there might be a registry hack that'll do that. I want to recommend something, though, to you, Dennis. Okay. Uh, I understand why you want that. Yeah, and because it's, it's it, annoying to have to go back. Yeah. You know? 
So what I think you want is something that uh, I've discovered has changed my browsing life. It's okay. called tabbed browsing. And it's very similar to what you're talking about, but instead of opening a whole new window, which can be tricky to manage, what it does is every time you open a new page, it opens it in a tab, which uh, I can't, unfortunately, oh, there we go. Looks like we've got internet access. Let's try it now. Great. No, 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 no. I don't know what's going on here. They probably forgot to pay the bill. Right. But, ah, oh, well, there you go. Now you can see, now it's not going to load any pages, but I've got some tabs here. So mm -hmm. what you do is you click these tabs, so it's all in the same window. Would that do what you want? Possibly. Yeah, I think you would like this. I'll tell you, it's changed the way I surf, because what I'll do is open a bunch of pages and tabs, and, and the neat thing is, while you're on one tab, the other page can be loading up for you. And you can have 100 tabs across here. You know, you can have a bookmark, as we do here, where, uh, where you've got a bunch of pages that open all at once. Un like, unfortunately, our net like access I want to go to tab three, I tap on tab three, and now I know what it's going to be. Yeah, know? exactly. Uh, and so it's, a, it's, it's the same thing. I mean, I imagine what you want with multiple windows is you all tab from window to window, right? Right, so I can yeah. just look at two or three things. Well, what, you know. This I, would be what, very what similar. Is, now, right. there's two ways to get tabbed browsing. One is to use a, a, a different browser like Mozilla, which is a mm -hmm. really great browser that has that built in. There are some software programs you can download to modify Internet Explorer. I think my IE2 is the one that we recommend that will add tabs to Internet Explorer. So we'll put a link to those on the website. because there's. The, so I think uh, there probably is a registry edit, and I will look to see that will automatically open in a new window. Okay. I, I have to say, you're probably one of the few people, Dennis, that actually wants that. Oh, really? Yeah, but okay. <laughs> that would be annoying to me. Okay. But uh, I will look, and I bet you there is, but I would say for you, tabbed browsing might be the best of both worlds because it's okay. still organized. It's all in one window, so it doesn't kind of, you don't get all these cascades of windows filling up your screen, and you still get that benefit of clicking window to window or tab to tab. Uh, and I think it's a good way to go. We'll have a link to a program that makes IE do it. We'll mm -hmm. have a link to Mozilla. And if I can find one before the end of the show, I will have some information on a reg hack that will get that done as well. And, Mo and Mozilla is different from Internet Explorer? Or it is. It's, a f it? it's, it's basically Netscape. Okay. Uh, the folks at Netscape uh, gave away the what they call the source code, the programming information for Netscape some years ago. And Mozilla has been developed by volunteers Oh. and has become, I think, the best browser out there. And something about Fireworm or... Yeah, fire, oh, Firefox. That's a... Firefox. The fire, fire worm. worm. Firefox fire. is a... Some is, animal. Is a, also from Mozilla. This is all at Mozilla.org, and it's kind of a newer version of Mozilla. You, I love Firefox, too. The, a couple of other things that I think should be Internet Explorer that are not, both Firefox and Mozilla have pop-up blocking, so you never see pop-ups anymore. In and a Google in the corner? And they have Google in the corner. That's in Firefox. Yeah, I love right. Google. Well, yeah, I, I, read the, I just, I just did, was hesitant about downloading it. Don't be hesitant. It's great. Super. I highly recommend it. And I think it's going to give you the feature that you're really looking for, which is that ability to kind of organize multiple pages. Great. All right. Well, that certainly helped me today, Leo. Well, Dennis, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. I thank you so much for joining us. Y'all take care and appreciate y'all being there for us. It's our great pleasure. We love what we do. Bye-bye. Take care. Coming up next, if Fawn keeps setting them up, I'm going to keep answering them. We're going to take two quick calls back to back when Call for Help continues. Don't go away. Fawn, look, she's working. She's working. She's getting some calls for me, right? Right. Roger is the man. He got us our internet access back. Thank you, Roger. I appreciate it. Or maybe I spoke too soon. Did I? <laughs> it's dead again. I Roger, you got here. it back. You got is it, it back. working? Is it working? Uh, yeah, kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. Uh, it's sorry. either working or it's not his working. His diagnostic, there it is, it's working. Right. His, his diagnostic of this is somebody sat on a cable somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's, not like a, it's not like a water hose, Roger. You don't see. No, I mean someone <laughs> sat on something and disconnected it. Oh, okay. Jeez. Mm. A little imagination, please. <laughs> Let's get back to the phones. Who's on the line, Kat? Do you think we could do a whole show without it? I guess we probably could. You could. I could. I don't need any. Chalkboard. Give me a chalkboard, a piece and of a paper. Microphone. I can draw the internet. All right. <laughs> On the phone, it's Paul from Tucson, Arizona, Leo. Thank you, Kat. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Good, good. How are you? Back to the great Southwest. Yeah. How are things in Tucson? Hot. Yeah. Very. I remember it was hot. I used to do a TV show down there called Internet! Exclamation <laughs> mark. It was hot down there. Yeah. What can I do for you? Well, I have this ThinkPad that has ME on it. Okay. And I want to reformat it completely and install XP. But as far as I know, to put XP onto something after you reformat it, you need to boot from floppy, but there's no floppy drive. You do not need to boot from floppy. Do you have a CD ROM drive? Yes. All right. 
That's the easiest thing in the world. First of all, you can install XP on top of ME. Right. If you wanted to save your applications and settings. Right. However, I commend you because you're wisely saying, no, I should start from scratch. And that's always the best way to install an operating system as long as you've backed everything up. Right, Paul? Right. You can back everything up. Now, the great thing about XP is you put that CD in there and uh, you can do this on your ThinkPad. Almost all computers you can do it. You tell the computer to boot from the CD-ROM. You'll run the installation procedure. And the very first thing XP does is say, I see you have a version of Windows here. Do you want to keep it, have me install on top of it, or do you want a fresh install? And if you say, I want a fresh install, it'll say, well, do you want me to reformat the hard drive? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to partition it? It has a built-in partitioner and formatter. And since you're not saving anything, you can use that to divide your hard drive up if you want. To, to start from scratch, it's all built in, so you don't need a floppy at all. You can format it with the install CD that comes with XP. Nice. Okay? Okay. Good luck. I think you're going to find that's a very nice upgrade. All right. Thank yeah. you. Good luck, Paul. Let's right. take another call. Who's on the line, Kat? Okay, let's do it. It's Justin from Cooper, uh, Cooperopolis? Copperopolis. Copperopolis, California. Yeah, I know Copperopolis. 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 What a name. Hey, Justin, how you doing? Oh, pretty good. How about you, Leah? We're doing very well. What can I do for you today? Um, I want to know about Merck, also known as M-I-R-C. Merck. Yes. I want to know what it was, how to use it. What is this? And is it safe? Is it safe? No. <laughs> it's, it can be a little bit tricky. IRC stands for Internet Relay Chat. And it is the, one of the oldest applications on the Internet. It actually is older than the World Wide Web. And it's chat like you're, if you've used AIM or any other chat service, it's very similar to that. IRC chat rooms are rooms where multiple people are talking all at once. And you can use a variety of different programs to get into IRC. Merck happens to be the most popular program for Windows, but there are many, many choices. Merck is uh, not free. It's shareware. I think it's 30 bucks. I use Merck. A lot of people use Merck because it's very scriptable and customizable. You can download Merck from the website mirc.com and try it for free. And frankly, uh, it doesn't really bug you if you don't give them money. So, but I paid for it. But, uh, you know, it's nice to have a full version of it. Very powerful. Is it dangerous? Potentially because it is so scriptable, it is so powerful, you can have problems in IRC. Lots of hackers hang out there. It's kind of the wild west of the internet. It's not regulated. You know, it's not like going into an AOL chat room where their moderator is going, no, no, no. Anything can happen. So, for instance, you should absolutely turn off automatic file receive in Merck. You shouldn't allow people just to send you files because you can get in real trouble. They can send you a script that can take over your computer. Things like that. But, I, you know, your, your internet address is visible when you're in an IRC chat room. So if somebody wants to do something to you and you have some vulnerabilities on your system, they maybe have a, t a, a way to target you. But it's not. I wouldn't worry too much. Now, there's a lot of ways to get into chat. Uh, for instance, I have a chat room on, uh, that I use with a radio show. And you just go to irc.dslextreme.com and you, and, you, and you go in the chat room. And it's a little Java client, which means that it doesn't have to, you don't have to install Merck. You, can, you saw it a second ago, it's going to reinstall now. It's going to download the, the thing. There it is. And you can go in the chat room, and it's just like Merck. Uh, Dan's in there and a, lot, a bunch of other people. It's, there's somebody, I don't understand, because you know, I do that radio show on the weekends, but there's, <laughs> they chat in there all the week long. It's Thursday, and they're in there. So uh, this is a, this is a, a and it's just like IRC, you go, hi, guys. And then it, everybody sees that, and you, they can chat back and forth uh, with you. Uh, all right. So you don't have to use um, uh, you don't have to use Merck. Okay. You, you can use a variety of clients, including this isn't even something you need to install. This is just a I make this uh, available on my site as a Java thing, so that people don't have to know anything about Merck. Okay. But if you get serious about IRC, I think Merck is a very very good program, and I probably do recommend it. And again, you should probably read. They talk about it in the documentation. Merck security rules, things not to do. Don't download from strangers. Don't click on links from strangers. Uh, and, and, you know, make sure you have your Windows update and your antiviruses update and all that okay. stuff. Okay. But that's the normal thing. All right. Justin, I think IRC is a great way. Have you, have you done any IRC chatting? Um, so far, I've done some XTC searches and a little bit of IRC chatting, just trying to ask people around how to do things. Well, it's, you know, there are thousands and thousands of IRC chat rooms. It's kind of like the unknown underground of the Internet. Yeah. And I think there's, I mean, first of all, that's where a lot of piracy occurs. You can, you know, a lot of file swapping occurs on IRC. But also, there's newbie chat rooms where you can learn something. Um, almost all the open source programs that are being developed have active chat rooms where people go in there and exchange information. It is just a wonderful resource. Just got to be careful. It's like the Wild West. There's no Wyatt Earp there keeping an eye on things. Okay. All right? 
All right, thank you. I thank you for the call, Justin. Have I appreciate a good day. it. Still ahead, Tech TV Labs' Andrew Hahn is here to round up a few of his favorite new gaming accessories from E3. And coming up next, download a better image browser. Roger has a free file that'll let you create musical slideshows, extract icons from files, encrypt images, and a whole lot more. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. If you're looking for a full featured image viewer with the ability to make slideshows, and who isn't, why not try out today's free file? It's Image Browser Arctic. Yes, now. Can you only do images of snow? No, it's, oh. uh, you can do many images like JPEG, GIF, bitmap. And it's great because, you know, you can, once you have it, you can, you know, get a thumbnail view of I, what you want. Or I have to say, everybody should have something like this because it's just so much easier to look at your images. Y yeah, and, you know, one of the cool things, actually, the, re the real reason I like this so much is it lets you make slideshows. That's you know how neat. we oftentimes get people calling, I want to make my slideshows yeah. on my vacation photos. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is it, and it does it for free. You just click on slides, and it's going to come up with the little slideshow editor. And all you need to do is pick out the pictures that you want. So we'll take those. And then if I want, I can actually add a background or music. Oh, that's uh, Let me see. And let's actually, uh, yeah. What? For You're oh. looking for the music? More yeah. Uh, uh, more, uh, more, uh, more uh, yep, yep, background? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. How about uh, more options? Would that do it? Probably. You know, I have, uh, I must admit, uh, I just use this not more than a week ago. And until for some reason, I'm totally blank right now. That's all right, Roger. I but uh, it's is, it's you know. it's cool, and you know, once I preview, when I can you get to be Roger's age, it's hard to remember things. When, once you've done this show as long as I have, <laughs> you, you begin. You've to done it longer than I have, really. Uh, yeah, you know, it's kind of weird. Because I left for a while. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, I started my internship a week before the show started. Did you really? Yes. You were an intern. Yes, wow. I've been here six years. Wow. That's I'm a warhorse. Yeah, you were something. I'm something. Is this the slideshow? I think it's uh, fascinating it's, so far. It's fascinating so far, and for for you know, you know what? I got this working <laughs> not ten minutes before the show started, and, and then the, the internet went down. It wasn't your fault. You know, I I think it's you. You jinxed but you, everything. You like this program, right? I love you it. Know, you I know think, what? I think what's happening. Believe is me, it's it's. I'm gonna I'm gonna protect you, Roger. This computer has crashed. Yes. It's not your fault. I blame you. That was the that was the motto it. on day one, and it's the motto still today. It's not your fault. Yes, and you know what? Uh, as embarrassed as I am, I, I must admit it's actually a great free file. So when download it, works, it and try it, it. And the cool thing is it'll generate the uh, slideshow into an executable. So if you want to send it to Grandma, oh, that's nice. Or you want to send it to including the pictures, or do you have yeah, to? Yeah, no, it puts everything into an executable. Oh, that's you a great email idea. it, you double click it, plays the music, goes to the slideshow. Only thing it's going to do is give this Utica this is slide. The, this is the little ad. Oh, it had the little ad in the beginning, but Big once deal. it starts rolling through, it's great. Big Believe deal. me, it's great. It, it's worked <laughs> every time <laughs> except for today. <laughs> I think it's actually locked up. <laughs> I think it's dead. All right. All right. You go back, reboot the computer, <laughs> and I'll take another call. Let's see who's... Yeah, it's not responding. That's what it says. No, don't reboot. I think I can kill it. Uh -huh. Who's who's on the line, Kat? Of course. Is there anybody who actually wants to ask us anything yes, now after Jeff, seeing that? Jeff from Minden, <laughs> Nevada, wants to ask you a burning question. Hey, Jeff. How are you? I got it back. I just killed the process. How are you, Jeff? Hi, Leo. Hey, Leo. Yes, sir. Great save for Rod. <laughs> Poor Roger. <laughs> What a save. <laughs> I'm trying to help him. I Kat know. says, I don't care. Done it good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help him out. You know, that's one of the reasons we've always done these shows live, and, and one of the things I like best is, you know, some, it, when we first started doing computer shows, one of the things I hated was everything looked like it always worked. And <laughs> as a user, I knew that was a lie. So I said, we're going to do these live. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And everybody at home goes, yeah, I see, I knew. <laughs> it You're didn't right. work. It doesn't work. It's normal. <laughs> it's just the normal experience of computers. That's why we love them. So what can I do for you, Jeff? Okay, Leo. Uh, I've got a, an old uh, uh, Passario, compact Passario, yes. that just totally died on me. Oh, no power. I got, I got light to the power and so forth. Okay. But the problem is I've got a lot of information on the hard drive. Yeah. Now, I've taken the hard drive out. Okay. A uh, little Toshiba hard drive yep. of 6 gig. And I just finished building a PC, and my question is, how can I get ah. the information off of the laptop old hard drive right. onto my PC? I have in my pocket <laughs> two no, hard drives. I, see, the which ribbons I, are different. I, I walk around with them all the time. You should see me at airport security. So <laughs> this is a normal five and a quarter inch hard drive like you'd have in your PC. Uh -huh. And I want you to look at the connectors on here. Uh, right. You see it has a separate power and data connector. Now, this is what you've got, which is a little... Uh, laptop form factor hard drive, it only has one connector. Correct. 
all the data and power goes through this one connector. That's right. So all you got to do to make this work is get an adapter, and they're about 4 or $5. You can buy them online. It's a laptop to IDE connector. Great. And it's very simple. And what will happen is the connector will have, the cable will have this connection on one end, and it'll have two connections on the other end so that you can plug in the power tail of your desktop and your normal IDE connection on that. Uh -huh. Now, would I operate this as a slave? Yeah, um, yeah, I, you'd probably be the secondary drive. Now, there's no jumpers on it, so I'm not sure how right. you would do that. Yeah. I think your best bet is, actually, I was pointing at the wrong end. Here's the connector. <laughs> and, there, and there are jumpers on this, so I'm thinking maybe you can jumper it to be primary and secondary drives. Um, but, but in any event, I would say just put it on the uh, uh, unused chain, uh -huh. boot from your normal drive, and uh, don't try to boot from this, and then you can read the data off of it. And it, even though now I'm running a XP Pro on, on my the PC, and yeah. this, on this is 98 SE. That's why you don't want to boot off this. Okay, great. You want to boot off your XP drive. You'll be able to see the hard drive, uh -huh. and you'll be able to copy. If you boot off the 98, you probably won't see the XP drives because they're uh, the new NTFS right, file system. Right, 98, right. You can't see them. So you boot off your, yes, you're right. You don't want to mess with the primary and secondaries. You still want your XP drive to boot. Uh -huh. and just use this as a secondary drive and just copy the data off of it. Okay, great. And so I, you don't have to try to mount it and screw it in unless you're going to leave it there. No, I'm just going to let it hang there because I still yes. got the side of my PC case open. I'm still exactly. putting stuff in and out of it. It's the Patrick Norton technique. <laughs> That's it. There's nothing you can't do without a little bit of duct tape and the, gl and the chewing gum. Right? Oh, yeah, some quick ties. <laughs> yeah, he just puts it, yeah, that's exactly what Patrick does. He'll <laughs> just have it hang in there. But the difference between you and Patrick is you're just doing this for a short time. Patrick well, leaves it there for years. Well, I saw, I saw Oshie and Patrick making a round cable out of a flat ribbon oh, Oh, they're, they're amazing. That was beautiful. I love them. I love I just, I, could, I sit there in, uh, in awe. <laughs> hey, Jeff, I thank you. Yeah, I, I'll uh, put a link to a site where you can buy these. There's lots of places to buy oh, them. You great. just need an adapter that goes from a laptop drive to a standard IDE. All right, Leo. Hey, thanks a lot. Huh? Thank you for the call. Uh, have a good day. It. You too. Bye-bye. Coming up, represent your hometown. Representing. Uh, watch, I'm going to do that. I'm representing by emblazing it on your chest. Kat's going to show you a site that will let you design your own custom T-shirts and uh, this thing the young people call hoodies. We call them sweatshirts when I was a child. But before we head to break, many years ago. You know, I was born before Google. Let's test your technology with our daily quiz. Yes, I know, hard to believe. Head to the website, give us the right answer. We might give you a Tech TV t-shirt. Our quiz question of the day, which arcade game sparked a nationwide controversy back in 1976? Was it Castle Wolfenstein, Custer's Revenge, Death Race, or Dig Dug Does Dallas. Get to the website, give us the answer. Oh, you got me on that one. We'll talk about it when Call for Help continues. Stay here. <laughs> Be the envy of all of your friends with the Call for Help wallpaper. Oh, yeah, when you show up at the LAN party and you sport the wallpaper of Call for Help, you're going to be sporting the coolest wares in the house, boy. Go ahead and click on this, and you will see that you can go ahead and download the wallpapers here. You can even get my horrible handwriting here if you want it to. Pretty cool stuff if you ask me. Go do it now. Do it. Okay, there we go. Um, okay. So you guys know how uh, I love websites that let you customize things. Well, I found yet another one. This one lets you customize clothes, and it totally rocks, although my neighbor hoodie isn't here yet, so I can't show you, but they're cool. Go to neighborhoodies.com. You have to love that name. It's a bunch of people in New York City that have come up with this idea, and they're called mass, customize, well, mass customization sites is what they are if you're looking into them. This is how it works. You come to Neighbor Hoodies, and you see here are a bunch of Neighbor Hoodies. And a hoodie, if you don't know what it is, it's a zip-up sweatshirt with a hood. And they're usually thin. Some of them aren't too thick, but they've got all kinds of things you can get here. You can get baby tees and regular tees and hats. You can even get customized on your booty. Look at that. Pretty cool stuff you got here. You can get one for your dog. What you do is you decide which type of shirt you want, and then you go to the customize page, and you pick out the colors that you want, and then right here you enter in the text that you want on the shirt. So you go ahead and click this and say, I want like kitty cat. They're all in, um, they're all in uppercase letters. So, and then you can add stars or you can add hearts. Then you go down here and you enter in where you want the stars and the hearts, and that's it. They sew them on and send them to you. They're about 50 bucks each. But they're really cool because they are customizable. Here's a gallery if you need some help. They've got them all here. Uh, sometimes they're a little more creative than I can be. So when I actually, 
Like, I love dorks. Mine's going to say, I love geeks. Aww. Yeah, and if you, once you get your customizable shirt, you can send them, uh, you can send it to them and they'll put it up on this page. The other mass customization site that is amazing is Land's End lets you customize your chinos. Now, I don't really wear chinos, but my mom does, you know, these pants. Uh, what you do is you go to the mass customization, you go here, go to the women's section, and then the bottom right-hand side, you're going to see customize my pants. <laughs> Create a new pair. They're $54, but look at how many different things they yeah. ask you. So you go through, and you actually tell them exactly what your body looks like. That's not even the whole thing. Then here's this other page. What's your size? What's your wow. weight? They need to know your bra size, which I don't understand why. Why would and you that? And then you go through, well, I guess for future purchases, oh, okay. and you tell them exactly how your body looks, and then you get a customized pair of pants. I want a curvy, round, exactly. full-wide pair of pants. <laughs> full-wide, baby. With a more room. Full-wide. $54, you get pants that fit you to a T. Check I've it out. I've actually used that, not for pants, but they have a uh, dress shirt. Mm -hmm. Customizer, same on thing. On Land's End? On Land's End. Yeah, and they're good. I was really happy. Really? Yeah, it really came out wonderfully. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yep, there's something about tailoring your clothes that makes you feel special. That's the computers. Right? You know? That's You'll find amazing. all the details on our website, techtv.com slash call for help. Are you going to use one of these services? Send me an email, cat at techtv.com. I have. All I right. I have. Thank you, Kat. Sweet. I found uh, for our last caller, I mean, there's lots of places. This is cablesandmore.com. This is the Laptrip hard drive converter, and it's exactly what you need. A couple of bucks. They're not expensive. And, uh, yeah, you could even make an external uh, case for it and, uh, and, and connect it by a firewire or something like that. $12 for, for this particular model. Coming up, E3, the Electronic Entertainment Expo, the biggest video game convention of the year. We're about to get an exclusive look at some of the more interesting gaming gear featured at this year's show when Call for Help returns. Stay right here. Here, Andrew Hahn is back from the hottest gaming convention of the year, E3. You've been every year since uh, day one, right? Uh, pretty much. 83s? I missed a couple of years. But yeah. I was there the first year. Maybe I missed the second. I can't remember. What is E3? Um, it's the Electronic uh, Entertainment Expo, and they started in, I think, 95, somewhere yeah. around there. You know, my good friend Gina Smith, my old uh, co-host yeah, on the radio, started it. She was the editor-in-chief of Electronic Entertainment yep. Magazine. They started this little gaming thing, which yep. has taken off now. Totally. Is it the uh, convention of the year? It's absolutely it? the convention. Yeah. There's like 60 or 70,000 people that go every year. It's, I mean, it's amazing. You have this vast amount of games, all these publishers, great parties, Sony, yeah. you know, Nintendo, everybody. Open there. to the public or only press? You know, I think the last day is open to the public. But okay. pretty much press and analysts, that's pretty As much usual, it. the best stuff's for the yeah. press, huh? So what did you bring back from uh, E3 here? Well, I got a few things. I couldn't get, like, you know, the thing I really wanted was the PSP, the Sony PlayStation, um, uh, the portable uh, handheld device, or the uh, Nokia, um, or sorry, not Nokia, the Nintendo. In, the, uh, Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, the uh, DS dual screen. Both of those are not going to be available at the end of the year. Th anyway. Yeah, those are like way or even early next year. Yeah. So don't so worry about So they have prototypes those. there, though. Yeah, holding them up. Doing Impressive. The dance. Um, you know what? I'm I'm kind of I'm intrigued by the. They're both uh, the handheld. DS. They're kind of next generation. Yeah. The, the DS is kind of like a is kind of like the the SP but wider and with uh, two screens instead of right, one. Right. Uh, the Sony device I think is just a platform for Sony Connect and music and also. The so it's going to be a much more uh, powerful. Yeah, device. it'll be a lot of other stuff right. um, that'll be involved. That, not just gaming. Okay. I don't know if that's the right way to go, but you know, they're cool things. I, I'm really impressed by some of the specs. You did bring this, and I'm so glad you I brought this. this. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> no, you know what? I, okay, so here, Nyko, right? Not, not the company that you think about in terms of like the highest end stuff, but they <laughs> do some things that I'd like and some things I don't like. I like this thing. This is 15 <laughs> bucks. Yeah. And you see the little, uh, the little holes there? It's, There's a it's fan a in fan. there. I could feel yeah. a little air coming out, of air out. coming out of there. So this is for sweaty palm yeah. mouses? Yeah. yeah, you're you're playing, you're going crazy, your hands are sweaty, and you're like, you know, you don't want them to get sweaty. And well, there's nothing. The yeah, exactly. You know, the, you're, you're the trouble with this somebody. guy, though, is that you know, I see the the, the tilt of the of the buttons. Yeah. I don't like that because your finger falls off. Robert was playing with this. Robert from the lab. And yeah, he see, his finger kept flying. Your palms off may be dry, but your fingers yeah, right. are sweaty. And yeah, exactly. Okay. There's a speed on the back. You control two speeds. It's just a cool thing to you have. You know, it's though. 15 bucks. What do you want? It's cool. <laughs> you know, and it, literally cool. I mean, my hand yeah, yeah. feels cool. Indeed. So that's kind of a cool little throwaway thing, okay. but. But Nokia, you know, the thing about these guys, they introduced the N-Gage uh, a couple of years ago. Now, this year is the original N-Gage. That's the original the taco one. taco phone. It was a taco. A lot of people didn't like it. The screen was nice, all that stuff. But 
It was about the games. They only have 15 games. It was really expensive. But the games come on little SD chips, which is kind of neat. They do, but the problem with this guy is, I'll show you, to, you to, to actually, the, you have to pop the battery yeah. out and put the game in. Oh, yeah, it's not really. So they've got a new generation. Huh? So this is the next generation. This is the QD, the Nokia Engage QD. And the thing that's good about this guy is that it has a much better uh, screen. It's much brighter than this earlier one. Let me see if I can't get the brightness up. Um, it's also smaller. You don't have to hold it like a taco. You can talk to cool. it like a phone. Yeah, right? you talk to it sideways and not like. See, like I'll, I'll sort of it makes you it makes you look like you have an elephant ear yeah. on this phone because you say, oh, "Hi, how are you?" Yeah, exactly. To talk to you. This this one is like that's this. like a phone. Yeah, yeah. 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 Head it upside down. No, that's right. So it's like a phone. You don't look. I like still an don't idiot. like holding because you get makeup on the screen. Oh, you that's probably right. don't have that. No, problem. I don't have that yeah. problem right now. <laughs> yeah, not normally. Um, <laughs> anyway, but the the thing about this is is it's it's a little more powerful. It's it's just I think a better platform in general. Um, oh and the games are pretty good. They're coming out with more games. Sims? Yeah, that's uh, Sims busting out. That's a pretty you good game. Me. I was playing that. It's pretty cool. It performs pretty well. Wow. But you know, the thing is the screen's a little small. It's a good resolution screen. They've made some improvements, a little faster, obviously a little, little bit better screen, a little brighter, and it's smaller. And you can take the games and put them in through, a, through the, uh, the bottom, a little flap instead of taking oh, the back off the battery. Oh, it's got a flap. Yeah, it's just an engineering disaster just, for them, flat. I think. I mean, it's also a, cheaper, right? It, what, yeah. The original Engage was like 400 bucks. It was like $400. They couldn't sell it. That was the big thing. They didn't right. do good deals with, right. with carriers. This guy's about 179 or 200 bucks. You probably find it for $200. Do you really want to game. play games on your phone like that? I, you know, I don't. But I would buy an XP. <laughs> Seriously, I'd buy a, a Game Boy <laughs> yeah. SP. And yeah, or the Zodiac. Now, this is neat. Yeah. Now this is a Palm device, thing. right? It is. It's a full Palm, a Palm, Palm, hello, Palm 5.1, I think, or 5.2. Which is the latest operating which system. Which is the la latest one. Here, let, let me, you play let me, it, because you, you know what you're doing. Well, here. let me see if I can't, uh, uh, let's go here. Yeah, so the thing about this device can is, you can you, can you guys Maddie see that? Maddie over your I don't know. Uh, there you go. There we go. Yeah, it's well. a little reflective, but the thing that's cool about this is it, it's really, it's got a you're lot of. playing Doom. A pl no, this is actually Duke Nukem. Oh, Duke Nukem. Yeah. And the thing about this device is it's not that, it's not that, uh, well, actually, you can get a 32 meg version that's about 200 bucks. Okay. This one's about 399 so it's fast 400 bucks. This is Duke Nukem yeah. 3D, or no, this is the original Duke Nukem? This is original Duke Nukem, yeah. yeah. But so it's, it's fast, fast enough, enough to, do to that. play yeah. and to have fun. It has force feedback, dual, dual speakers. Really? It's got yeah. a little rumble pack in there? Yeah, and there's, <laughs> it's got a great interface. Check out that interface. You, you got all these, they've sort of done a customized interface. You can just touch oh, the screen and oh, go a to different screen. thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let me see if so I can. would you use yeah. it as a Palm too? I mean, does it have an address book and a yes, calendar? Yes, it has everything. All, all the, the regular stuff Palm want. stuff. Plus, it's a gaming. Plus, there's. See, now I kind of like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's really versatile for that. If you want a PDA and a gaming system, big screen, very bright. Three ninety nine. Two SD slots in the top. You two. Can, yeah, and Bluetooth. See the little Bluetooth. Oh. So you can go back and forth oh. and game. Good games for it. Plus, there's all the Palm games. Selling Marge Simpson. Oh. So <laughs> is this uh, the new, a newer version? Because I've seen this before. Yeah. Yeah, this They've is a new version. It. This is the 128 meg version. This is Ooh, 400 bucks. Baby. I was going to say it was inexpensive, but it really is. 400. It's very expensive. Well, if you're buying it, that's a lot of memory. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right, I mean, one I'm more thing. I'm living in the old you world. You got a nice new monitor. I like I, this, this monitor. This thing is is awesome. I should probably turn now, it. Now, what does this have to do with gaming? Doesn't aren't LCDs terrible for gaming? They normally are, and I'm not sure if this is a lot better, but this is a 12 millisecond response. That's panel. the key. They're fast. Yeah. They're, they're normally too slow. And right. And, and LCD has a hard time changing from you know gray to gray right, and different right, colors. Right. It has a sort of residual blur to it. So right. you don't want to watch movies on it, and you don't want to play See, games. I've it. never had that problem. I've never yeah. noticed it. You know what? I don't know. I, I think I've seen it a little bit, but I don't know if it's like a huge issue. Right. But for most gamers, I play on CRTs because I just think they look yeah. better. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Anyway, 12 millisecond, pretty good. Um, we've been playing it. It's a lot of fun. I mean, the movement's pretty good. Uh, you can sort of see. You're not going to pick this up on TV, yeah, but you I know, mean, I mean, it's not bad for for a good LCD. It's 5.99. That's a that's little expensive. Price. Oh, it's um, expensive. So okay. yeah, these guys do a good job though. They make their own own glass. I have a SyncMaster 191T digital. I'm loving it. It's a 19 inch. It's not one of the fast ones. I play, you know, Unreal yeah. and Quake and all that stuff. I, I think if you get down to around 12 or 16, you're probably going to be fine. Yeah. But you know, until they get to about eight or so, then it's then it's competitive yeah, with a yeah. CRT. That's pretty competitive. See, I guess you know, I just have old eyes. I can't tell. Yeah. Very cool stuff. I think this Zodiac might be my favorite, although I'm liking the new N-Gage. N-Gage kind of neat. I'm yeah. a Zodiac fan. Though. I, I, I want one of these. That's yeah, really that's cool. Awesome. If you want to read more about the E3 Electronic Entertainment Expo and these particular products, go to our website, techtv.com slash call for help. Up next, it's a Wired World Fire Sale. We've stacked the big board with the best prizes we've had left, and we're going to try to blow them out of the bare walls when Call for Help continues. Don't go away. Hi, 
right, welcome back. It's time for the Wired World Challenge. And for that, we're going to need a contestant, someone schmott, someone who's something going on upstairs. What do we have on the phone deck? All of our viewers are smart. They are schmott. Leo, today we've got an extra special one. It's Rohit from Madison, Wisconsin. Oh, I remember Rohit. How are you? Good, how are you Have doing? we talked to you before on the show? No. Oh, I'm thinking of Mohi. Show, guys. That's I another guy. Well, it's yeah. good to have you. Welcome to the show. Are you ready Thanks. to play? Yep. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to give you four categories. You're going to pick one, and then I'll give you a question from that category, loosely related to the category. It might be a hint, it might not. If you get it right in 15 seconds or less, then the fun begins. That's when you pick a number from 1 to 25 and pick yourself a nice prize off our Wired World board. You ready to do it? Yep. All right, Rohit, here are your categories. Listen carefully. Scrub and Scour, Attack of the Clones, Make the Connection, and Writing on the Wall. Scrub and Scour, Attack of the Clones, Make the Connection, and Writing on the Wall. Uh, let's go for the uh, Make the Connection. Make the Connection. Here's your question, Rohit. 15 seconds to answer. A BNC connector is most commonly used with what kind of cable? Coaxial, Cat5, or XLR? A BNC connector goes with coax, Cat5, or XLR? I think it's Cat5. No, I'm sorry. It's coax. <laughs> okay. That was very hard. I'm sorry, Rohit. I don't know where that came from. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> when you're installing a T3 Gosh, pipe joint geez. on the overall U connector, should you use the... Let's get another caller. Yeah, poor guy. <laughs> on the line, it's John from Cor Coral Springs, Florida. Let's be a little nicer. John's John. scared now. Hey, John, how you doing? John. I'm sorry, it's Angelo. Oh, it's Angelo. Hey, Angelo. Where are you calling hey. from, Angelo? I'm in Coral Springs. Oh, you, oh, we got the city right. Just the name wrong. That's Welcome, right. Angelo. Nice to talk to you. Three categories remain, sir. Are you okay. ready? Here they yes. are. Writing on the wall, scrub and scour, and attack of the clones. Which would you like? Attack of the clones. Attack of the clones. Dum, 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 bum, bum, bum. Here is your question, sir. Text or grab. Macros, boiler plate, or fields? Fields. And we can't even give it anything away. Okay. Oh, oh, well, th thank you for playing with us, Angela. Hello, I appreciate thank it. Thank you. Have a Bye -bye. great day. Take care. Let's send another caller. What are we going to do with all those prizes? I you know, I think we have an idea. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Am I involved in that? No. Uh, on the <laughs> phone, it's Blake from Edgefield, South Carolina. TV. Welcome back. Call for help. Tomorrow, it is our final episode of Call for Help. I hope you'll tune in. We're not going to do it. You know, I'm not big on long goodbyes, but I, I, I'll give you a little hint. There will be a marriage. Someone will have a baby. And Roger's first TV kiss. So it's going to be a very special call for help tomorrow. I hope you'll, hope you'll join us. Let's check the uh, email bag before we head out of town today. Okay. <laughs> you, he's not going to kiss you. Don't worry, Kat. Okay. It's okay. And I'm not oh. having a baby or getting married. So You're not? Me, no. Oh. Okay, we'll have to find someone else then. <laughs> okay, good. I don't want to do any of those things for a long time. I have a Dell laptop. I want to know, is there any way to increase the, um, the video resolution on my laptop? Uh, you know, that's always a, a risky proposition. In fact, no, there isn't. Um, the, 
LCD screens in laptops and even on desktops have what's called a native resolution, the number of <laughs> actual physical dots on the screen. And you almost uh -huh. always on an LCD screen want to operate at that resolution, I whether see. it's 1024 or by 768 or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, you can often go smaller on a laptop, but sometimes what they'll do is just put a big black box around uh, the thing. You won't get any, stupid. but it, it rarely can you go bigger. So you can go smaller, but generally you want to go at the native resolution, the actual number of switches dots built into the screen. That's, right. that's what to do with any LCD screen. Very good. Okay, Cat Schwartz. Thank you. We'll be back tomorrow. Maybe your hoodie will come by then. I hope so. I heart geeks. <laughs> hey, I heart Andrew Hahn. Thank you so much for joining us. Whoa. Our great lab guy and, uh, of course, I heart you. Thank you so much for being here. We couldn't do this show without you. It's been so much fun. Join us for our last show tomorrow, will you? I'm Leo Laporte. Remember, if you've got a problem with your personal confuser, don't whine, don't moan, don't yell. Call for help. <laughs>